that cap. That's a that's a hefty penny you're playing you're paying for him, but what he can do on that field and when you're controlling him, it just makes it worth it. And it's hard to pass up a guy with that much athleticism. Joel CP and Prodigy here in this elite conference. Prodigy really needing a win for Joel. He can move to two and one and really cement himself inside that division A. Just trailing Blocky by a few games with a lot more to go. Both of these guys in their first seasons of competitive Madden on the circuit already established themselves, made name for themselves. I mean, it takes some guys a long time. You, you look at a guy like Stevie J, this is about his third year on the circuit, finally really starting to make some real noise. For these guys to come out year one and make things like the Ultimate League and the Madden Challenge, and make deep runs. It's just very impressive stuff at the young ages of 18 and 19 years old. They faced each other earlier in the season. Prodigy was a 38 to 18 victor over Joel, but a lot has changed since then. Deshaun rolling out. Watson across his body finds Paul Richardson out at the 48. Very, very well. Prodigy. He's going to be running that, that very popular West Coast offensive playbook, Scott. And you got Joel running the Indianapolis Colts defensive playbook. Mm -hmm. And that West Coast playbook, I mean, it, it is just so popular here in the Ultimate League. Popular gun bunch formation, halfback dig out play. Works it all the way down to the 28 on two straight completions. This time he'll hand it off to Henry. That'll bring up a second and ten. Ball to 27. Maybe got half a yard. Keep Prodigy pulling up that play art, running that mesh play. For those that don't know, keep in mind, Joel can't see that play art. You're only seeing the game right now from Prodigy's point of view. They're playing this online. The he almost it. Come on, man. You're playing with Dangerous fire, pass, RG. <laughs> oh, you and Joel took the fire. words right out of my mouth. You're playing with fire. And that's just good man-to-man -man defense. We see Joel and Dreamy, the two young bucks in Ultimate League. They're some of the best at mixing up that man and zone coverage. Really throws players off. Prodigy came into these into the season three and one in live events, but he's dropped his first two. Needs a win here. Remember that live event Let's was go. in mud draft. And for those that don't know, the difference is in the mud draft mode, you actually draft your team with a random pool of players that's given to you. In mud salary cap, like we talked about at the top, you are in control of what players you put on that team as long as they're under that cap. Field goal is up and it's good, so he strikes first. Double box action as Kiv and Stevie J. Kiv has worked it down to the 22. Real quick, Scott, the, one thing I do want to call out about Mud Draft, too, I think the main difference there, more so than the rosters, is the playbooks. In Mud Huge. Draft, you have to draft from a random assortment of playbooks, where in this mode, you get to pick your playbooks, and you can change them from game to game. So you're in a lot more control here in the Ultimate League than at the Madden Challenge when we were in Mud Draft, where Prodigy made his last run. Yeah, in the draft mode, when you pick your coach, it locks in your playbooks. Some say that's a true test, and some say that's a lot of randomness. Well, the problem with that format is there's situations where some guys happen to get the playbook that they're used to in the draft. So other guys are having to deal with randomness. You have some guys that are dealing with what they're comfortable doing. Maybe in the future, that you know, it's something the community's always talking about. Maybe in Mutt Draft in the future, we let guys pick their playbook. Find a way for them to use their own playbooks. Young Kiv, 2-0. and oh. Stevie J, 1-1. One and one. So Stevie J wins. If he can win this game, he'll be at the top of the Division B. Just like that with one win. Like those noble jerseys, Stevie J and Prodigy are given. We've been seeing a lot of those eSport organizations. We saw Luminosity with Problem, Echo Fox with Joe. 
And now Noble with two sponsored players here in the Ultimate League and Noble Prodigy and Noble Stevie J. That's cool stuff right there. So second and goal at the four. It's that Noble shirt. And Joke was with Noble at one point. Went over to Echo Fox and Noble supplements that with two younger stars here in the league. Hands it off to Bo. This Stevie J Kid game is cool. I was with these guys in the back room in the players' lounge, and they were chirping back and forth at each other because Kibbs had some of the best run defense we've seen in his first few games here in Ultimate League. Stevie J with one of the best run offenses. That would be a battle of wills between those two. Kibb trying to punch it in a touchdown before we see that. Division B matchup here in the Elite Conference. He must have caught that at the half yard line. Fourth and goal, what do you do? I don't know what Kibb wants to do here. Maybe he's going to come out, take a look at the defense. If he doesn't like what he sees, take the delay of game, kick the field goal. If you like what you see, snap the ball, try to go vintage for the touchdown. Big play. He's going to go. You like what he sees? You got to be careful. Stevie might just run right through that gap of this inside run. Watch for the run commit as well. Take the delay, yeah. He's going to use a timeout here. Interesting that, you, you know, if you back it up five yards, it's, it's, a, it's a better angle to kick it in from there. Sometimes you can get so close, that's really a narrow window from that hash. Kibb, just 20 years old, but he's in his third season of Madden. The awkward kicker, that's an out of position Jeff Heath, who's normally a safety. But Kiv has the out of position version of him and throws him in at kicker. And I th what that does, though, is in this situation here, where Kiv kicks it off, you have a safety that's kicking the ball off, but also gets to run down on the kick coverage, trying to pop you. So it's like an extra, it's an extra defender as much on on the kickoff team, which is a pretty smart move by Kiv. Some of the out of position players may be questionable, but Jeff Heath. Kicked a 49-yarder in high school. Where did you Win get, the game. Where did you get that stat from? Get out of here. You know, I'm just hanging out, reading, reading quarterlies about local high school achievements. Ran Fourth and six. Joel CP. Missed why? Oh, he's under trouble. Should have thrown it earlier, and you throw it away <laughs> to turn it over? Fourth down, questionable by Joel CP. He had a receiver, he missed him. Like he said, just throw it away. In that situation, you, you gotta just try to throw it up. A little fluke, as they like to call it. Oh, P's wide open, that's a dot trick. And there is Wallace. It's Mikey. All the way to the 18. So three of five now for Watson. Controlled by Prodigy. In the red zone. Good spread. Goes to Henry. And Henry will roll for three. Make it four, second and six. What a lot of in that West Coast playbook. It's just so popular. You guys have had so many looks at that playbook. They practice against it all the time. All the players in this, tour in this season. Even when you know what's coming, sometimes you just can't stop it. Pick! Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Joel's yelling pick right there, but if he wants to intercept that call, he needs to be able to click on to this defender and try to make a play. You can't let the AI try to guard routes like that and expect to pick. You have quick reaction time. He's click and cut. Click 90 and cut. plus route running, 90 catch. That Thursday night edition is really big as Henry gets it done on the ground. Yeah. We mentioned before, these guys met in the Madden Challenge group stage. Prodigy won by 20, and he's already up 10 here in the first. And a big game for Noble Prodigy, too. Need that first win of the season. And not only for the standings, you know, get get that first thousand dollars in your pocket. It's a thousand dollars a win here in the. It's a fumble. Oh, he's on the ground. Use a strip fumble. 
And Amos recovers. And it's awfully quiet in the camp of Joel CP. That's a way to quiet down the cap god. Don't give him any ability to cap this. Continue to keep the momentum. Prodigy with the huge turnover on special teams. So at the end of the first, it's a 10-0 lead for Prodigy, and he's got the ball. And young Kiv and Stevie J, 3-0, Kiv has possession. Quarter number two, 10 to nothing. Here in Division A of the Elite Conference. Prodigy looking for his first win. I mean, he, you know, it's such a log jam in the middle of this division. A win here would put him in a tie for second. It, they would have three guys in Division A all at one and two. Tight division, and it's just a tight league. When the skill gap is this small, you're dealing with the 16 best players. There's no sweet games. And unlike in the legend division, where you have guys like Chaos and Tweez that you know maybe not as familiar with Ultimate Team. A guy like Chaos, you know, in the middle of his basketball season, not getting the locker. Everybody in this elite side is locked in. Hands it off to Henry. Take a look at this again after the 10 0. That's a strip right kickoff there. and Amos user strip and gets the recovery. What, what he does to get that strip is there's actually a strip ball mechanic for the user on defense. And if you tackle the ball carrier with the RB button, you go for a strip type animation where you try to rip the ball out to give you more of a chance to get your tackle broken, but also a chance to cause that fumble. So good use of that mechanic right there by Prodigy to use RB. Tie that ball carry up to his best Charles Tillman impression. I mentioned Kim had the ball where he's all the way down in the red zone at the three. Hands it off to Langford. And Kim's in on the right. How about the Kiva. Really powerful right now, RG. Almost scary powerful. This offensive young Kim. I wonder what the odds would be if you wanted to go with Kim on the 10 game. I, mean, I can't get away from it. Let's go. And Prodigy on the left with a post route. Dots up Joel, 17 to nothing. Joel not happy about it. I was impressed, though, the way Joel handled his last loss in the second game of the season to Blocky. You saw him after the game in his interview with Adrian. It wasn't looking to blame anybody. Knew exactly what he did wrong. Gave the credit to Blocky. It's a mature attitude from the cap god. Deshaun fitting in a tight window. And it's a three-score game. Now here comes that run-and-shoot offense, RG. The only oh, player no. in the league that's using it. Maybe a question will read out at the 40. Loss of one. Yeah, he's lucky that DB didn't jump all over that. Right in the vicinity. I do like that Joel runs a spread type look. This is a different offense than we're used to seeing from a lot of the competitors. A lot of bunch and press sets from these guys. No tight ends. Joel wants some old school spread. Running with Mariota, and he strips him again, but he is able to recover. The fumble out of the 50 yard line. Prodigy. Trying to strip everything. That defense, the green machine right now in those Eagles jerseys playing. Extremely stingy. And here they come, the goons on third and one. And Joel CP's in hurry up on fourth and six. Going tempo. Three minutes left in the half. Oh, man, he could get himself in some trouble here if he doesn't convert. Keep that running back in the block, most likely. You got to think Prodigy sending the dogs here. Big fourth down. Able to convert. And on your right side, Stevie J has finally got himself in the red zone at the nine-yard line. You see Stevie J with 66 rushing yards. That's probably more rushing yards than Kiv has let up in 
the, his two previous games combined. Well, it was a big 47-yard run that got him down into the red zone, RG. Let's see if he can cap off this drive. Herschel! Down at the one. Third and goal. Stevie Jabrowski, a.k.a. Stevie J. Noble Gaming, part of that EMP crew, one of four members of that EMP crew that made Ultimate League. Errant throw on the left side by Joel brings up a third and one. It's a third and goal from the one at the two-minute warning in a ten-point game between Kiv and Stevie J. Trying to punch it in. Make it a field goal game before the half. So third and one for Joel on the left side of your screen, trailing by 17. And picks up the first down and a little bit more to the 26. And for the second time in this elite conference, CBJ didn't get the sneak, didn't get touched, stood back up and walked in. Just walks in. Casual. You just start preparing for that. Get ready to just shoot the gap so you can put hands on his quarterback once he falls flat on his face. Gotta stop letting that guy get up. And Stevie J needed that score. And Joel on the left side needs to answer. Trailing by 17. Good throw to the 10. So he's going to have first and goal. For Stevie J in this Kiv game, too, he's actually a decent matchup against Kiv just because. Stevie J practices so much against that West Coast playbook that Kiv likes to run. I mean, Musafa runs it, Joke runs it, Ghost runs it. So he gets tons of reps against exactly what Kiv's trying to do. And that should greatly benefit him in that game. Let's see what Joel CP's got over here, trying to get on the board for the first time. Mike Wallace will pick it off the turf for four. It's going to be second and goal from the six. <laughs> we have a timeout to stop the clock at 1.42 to go. Darius Slade Jr. on the tackle. Look at this run and shoot playbook, too. Dude. No I form, no strong, no weak. It's just single back type offenses. It is a single back spread. Another timeout by Prodigy. It's going to be a big down because Prod stops him here. Joel's going to have to think about taking that three, make it two possessions. Big play. He's got him. Come and on. Ingram, who fumbled on a kickoff earlier, hauls it in for the touchdown. Come on, man. Look at the chest play of Joel CP. Put himself back in the game. Could you? I would pay <laughs> a decent amount of coin. Fight. Come on, to see man. some footage of my dude Joel Fight. back in the day in those chess tournaments. Uh, imagine him putting you in checkmate. Checkmate, you're sweet. That'd be it's a lot point of fun. game now. Do they even allow that in chess? Like what? It's not allowed. Do they frown upon. They kick you out of the building. Or, gotta ask up. them about that. Come on, boys. Look at this pass again. High point. That Ingram and got a lot of speed and a lot of height. You know what, quick slants is one of those basic plays. You don't see it run a lot, but on the goal line when you just need to pick up four or five yards, it's a great play to give yourself a chance. As long as you don't force it. And look at Joel, he's getting going. Trying to get back in this one, trailing by 10. Prodigy second. And 10 to go. Tell you what, if Joel turns this into a stop here, he's going to go bananas. Sean Watson with time, touch pass. A little lobber. That was a nice pass, Scott. Like you said, you gotta put the touch on it. Drops it right in the basket. And able to go to the 42. Joel trying to lock in on D. First and 10. Does have that one timeout left. Focus. I like this game face camera. Ooh, on, almost man. threw a pick. Right Couldn't jump the route. Not like that was Renfro on the coverage. The, the thing is, I'm not. We've seen it in the Ultimate League where some guys are so fast at clicking on, 
and cut in underneath those passes. That's several times now where we've seen Joel just a little late on his click on, not able to move his player into position. He's gonna have, have to be a little quicker with that stuff. Looking at the defensive side of the ball for Joel CP, the 18-year-old from D.C., our nation's capital. Came into this one ranked number eight in the world. Pocketed 23,000 in winnings this year in Madden 18. In his second live event, just his rookie season, part of that top Madden crew, starting to make a name for himself for sure. The funny thing, it was him and Dreamy last year who were both not eligible for the MCS, both went to the same exact high school. And then both of them in their first year of eligibility, just like you kind of predicted it, Scott, they, you know, these were young guys on our radar, both making some serious noise. Both involved in the Madden Challenge. Both making it here to the Ultimate League. We saw him in some other tournaments that were sanctioned. Some Microsoft events, things like that in New York City. And those guys were battling. Every time they went out, you just knew from what the community had said, from, you know, they had faced, you know, top competition online, that when these guys became eligible, they were really going to make some noise in the league. And they've done of course, Drini already in the playoffs, and Joel would love, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I mean, I don't, that's that's really future casting, but if we had a Joel Drini final in Dallas of the Ultimate League, of course, they're both in different conferences as Prodigy kicks it through. Right now, Joel's not thinking about any of that. He's thinking, I'm down 13 with five minutes left in this game, and literally nothing has gone his way. So they're at the end of the quarter there. And at the end of the half, Stevie J makes it a three-point game. So heading into half, a couple scores there, and that's really the difference between your normal Madden players and the top shelf Madden guys. They know how to score before the end of the half. 20 to seven. Is your score between Prodigy and Joel. And Stevie J has come roaring back. Just a three-point game between him and Young Kiv. Start of the third quarter here between Young Kiv and Stevie J. Just a three-point game. Kiv looked strong early, RG, but Stevie J has held his ground, come roaring back at the end of the half, kicked a late field goal to make it a three-point game, and now he's going to get the opportunity to double-dip the chip. That's a good opportunity for Stevie J. Steven Jabberuski, Clearwater, Florida. Psychology major at UCF. Had a pretty good college football season, huh? Yeah, he wrote on his uh, little questionnaire that they're the national champions. Well, all right, settle, settle down a little bit there, youngster. But this is a guy that's looking to go to graduate school, get that next big degree. Tenth and in the MCS coming into that out of 16 players. Won about 20 grand this year. And this is his third live event in his second season of play. And, of course, he was the Buccaneers champion. Howdy. Here's Herschel. Like I said, they were in the back room. Stevie said, I'm going to run all over you, Kiv. Kiv said, you can't run on me. And it looks like Stevie's the one that's imposing his will in the trenches. 122 yards on the ground for Herschel. These guys are both, see those game faces, they're both pretty calm. <laughs> you know, not really, I mean, I'm not saying they're not locked in, but they're they're comfortable with their game plans, and it's a three-point game. Yeah, $1,000 on the line. I mean, it's early in the season. You're going to see the intensity really start to pick up in this conference for Ultimate League when we start really seeing those playoff scenarios start to unfold. And, reveal themselves. So a little bit too early to tell just yet. 
Yeah, no one's really on the bubble, so to speak. Well, Stevie, that gun goes to the gun bunch. I told those tight slots. That, that's nice when you can come out in a running formation like tight slots and then audible down oh to God. that gun bunch that everybody likes. Mix it up and keep your opponent off guard. I like yeah, that I from Stevie J. And he's rocking that Houston Texans offensive playbook. Bad, yeah, he's a Buccaneers champion. Rocking those Giants. Of course, his family with New York ties, and Herschel Walker takes it all the way down to the 14. He's got 133 yards now with Herschel. This is also the lettuce bowl. See, Kiv with a nice set of lettuce there, but Stevie J's got some underrated lettuce himself, huh? It's all part of being a youngster. Man, it's the complete opposite set of lettuce than when we got up here at the desk. <laughs> We're just trying to hang on, man. By the time, it's all over us. Well, it's funny. Sometimes you go back and you watch the shows, and they got the chat <laughs> on Twitch. You go back and watch them, and they're, they're Savage. Them, they're them to just give up. <laughs> we don't even uh, know why I go and get a haircut anymore. Now, the last couple of weeks, you and I, we've been on a treadmill, uh, elliptical, trying to, trying to make the right choices. Yeah. Trying to make good reads. Yeah. Michael Skimbo looks at me from the corner of his eye. He wasn't buying it. No. And there goes Stevie J into the end zone. And just like that, Stevie J's got the lead. I'm telling you, we talked about it earlier. I thought Stevie J was this, like the complete underdog in this division with Kiv, Spotney, and Skimbo. And I'm telling you, he's right up there. Stevie J's a force to be reckoned with. He has a good game plan. He's got himself a lot of experience. He has a good camp around him. Still young, so he still has got all the stick work you need. You know, as you get older, they say he's not losing the stick work. He's going to be a force. And he plays with a lot of passion. He, he, he doesn't, he, he takes that as motivation. He says that people often don't believe in me. They don't put me in that elite category, but he believes in himself. He's Came in ranked number 10. Number 10 player in the world in Madden football as you saw Joel on the left side of your screen able to get a field goal there. So it's 20 to 10 in their game. 17-13 here. Can Kiv respond with 2.15 to go in the quarter? Kiv is 14 and 10 in live events. Some of that EMB crew we talk about, Echo Fox, Joel, goes. Safa Jones, drag, got a lot of experience in that EMB camp. Hey, you talked about those crews are sort of like the, the MMA camps where like the iron sharpens iron, really get in there and mix it up, even though it's a you know one-on-one -on -one e sport, it's all about surrounding yourself with some guys that'll push you. Exactly, guys that you can trust, share, share information with them. That's different. So you see Stevie, he's part of the EMB crew, but then he's got a sponsor at Noble. That's something different. Noble's, you know, they're, they're more of like your corporate sponsor. They're going to help you get the equipment you need. They'll send you to what tournaments you, you got to go to. But that's a different mentality than your, your lab partners or, or your crew that you practice with. Yeah, I mean, you might, you know, in NASCAR, you might be with Hendricks Racing. But you might have M&Ms on the car. You know what I'm saying? You might be number 36, got the M&Ms. It's a great way to explain it, Scott. So second and eight at the 45. Watch Kiv go to work. And I always like to call it out when you watch young Kiv play. Hopefully I don't jinx him here, but it's so rare you're going to see this young man make a bad decision on offense. That Carson Wentz. It sort of fits his style. Kind of a steady as it goes quarterback. Makes his home in nearby Seattle, Washington. He's a big Seahawks fan. The club championship has eluded him two years in a row. Losing to Killer Mike. Who ha would have had an opportunity to maybe make the ultimate league, but. There's the kill off. And there is Warfield. The Hall of Famer. He just makes it look easy on offense, Cole. 
and going up against the stingy Stevie with his defense. Practices against this gun punch all the time. Kip does not seem to care. And look at him, he doesn't even blink. Business as usual for the young Kimba. Started off the season with a win over Skimbo <laughs> on Disney XD up in Minnesota. Kim has won $28,000 this year. He's won $70,000 for his Madden career, and he's adding to it with every drive. That might be enough to pay for his hoodie collection. <laughs> Let's take a look over on the other side with Joel CP and Prodigy. They're in the waning seconds of the third. And looking at the separation, Prodigy actually doesn't even have to snap the ball here, RG. Yeah, it's going to the fourth. Put your fours up. So that one's a 10-point lead as they head to the fourth quarter. And between Kiv and Stevie, it's about 30 seconds left in the quarter between them. And they're in the three-point game. So both these games still in reach. Still with some time to go. Five minutes left in the other one. We still have a few seconds left in this one. And boy, Stevie, Stevie J's just relaxed. I think he's in the same situation where he's going to take this third and two to the fourth quarter. Trailing by three, ball at the 36. So some Maalox moments maybe coming down the stretch in two of our games here. With Prodigy, a 10-point lead over Joel CP. And Stevie J just won't go away as young Kiv only leads by a field goal. So start of the fourth quarter between Joel and Prodigy. It's a 10-point game. Joel's got to get something going here. He struggled earlier. He had some turnovers, even in the special teams department. Prodigy's been steady as it goes. And remember, we talked about in the Madden Challenge group stage, Prodigy beat Joel by a large margin. The problem for Joel here is Prodigy with a first down in Joel territory, already up two possessions. Yeah, might be able to put this in the fridge on this drive. This might... Put Joel away. This is you love being in this situation when you're playing Madden because you literally all you got to do is kill the clock, continue to run the ball, low risk type plays, try to pick up first downs, move the chains, and just take as much time as you can away without turning the ball over. And we talked about point di differential could come into play, especially with Division A and Division B being a log jam right now ton of guys at one and two. So it might come down to some points here or there to either separate seeding or decide the guys that make it in. Yeah, the thing that's crazy to me is if Prodigy wins this game against Joel, you got three guys in that elite division A at one and two, like you said. And then if Kid's able to beat Stevie, you got three guys in that elite division B at one and two. It's almost like one and two is the place to be right now. That's why it's a huge game over there as well. Stevie J with a win. He can be at the top of the division. He's either going to the bottom or going to the top. Elite, the, the elite conference is tough. Can you imagine six of the eight players, one and two records? Including the number one player in the world, Michael Skimbo. First and ten after the conversion. Clock on the move. Henry. Try to stretch it outside, and he's going to lose four. Prodigy's continuing to kill this clock. It's so important to have clock management when playing high-level Madden. you got to remember, this is only five-minute quarter games with a 30-second play clock. So limiting your opponent's possessions and keeping their offense off the field is a really big deal. It's an important skill set to have. It gets extremely critical when you're in these fourth quarter type situations. Last thing you can do is turn it over. And I think that's why sort of a white gloves drive here, knowing that a field goal would make it a, a really a two touchdown game for Joel to come back and take the lead. Right. Yeah, what the field goal does, 
is it makes it so on Joel's next possession, he has to go for the touchdown. He can't at any point settle for three, go for an onside kick, kick off, try to play defense. He'll have to get that touchdown. So if you're Prodigy, you're not mad if you got to take the three here. And you don't want to take the sack. The throw to the end zone, why not? Forget about field goals. Ain't nobody got time for that. Young Michael Scott with ice in his veins. I'm not talking the office. I'm talking about Prodigy on third and long line and a touchdown right up the seam to go up 17 against Joel C.P. So 27 to 10. Joel got caught with both of the safeties up. He's going for that strip. No something went against Joel. I've, I've never seen, as we take a look at it again, he's he's trying to strip that ball from Joel at every opportunity. Yeah, probably. he's using that RB button, the strip mechanic, and another thing that he's able to do is we always talk about those coaching adjustments. There is a strip ball coaching adjustment where you can have your AI guys going for more strip tackles as well. You might be using that. Let's get a game update. Well, guys, Stevie J said he was going to run all over Kiv, and run he has, breaking the huge run over 50 yards for the big touchdown. But then, Rico, Kiv does something that we all know he can do. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Kiv throwing another touchdown. That's right. The deep touchdown pass gives him the 27-24 lead. And as I'm talking to you, he Stevie J has scored a touchdown to answer. We will show you that touchdown in just a second. 31-27, Stevie, three minutes left. Wow, so Stevie J. Roaring back. It's been an exciting second half. This one's in the fridge, RG. Yeah, I'm kind of salty. We're over here watching <laughs> Joel and Prodigy kill, kill the clock. And meanwhile, Kiv and Stevie J are going back and forth, touchdown for touchdown. There's another sack. Yeah, butter's getting hard. The jello's getting jiggly. This one's over. There we go. A little double box action. I like the double box. I don't like missing action, Scott. Here we go. So four-point game. Uh, that's why we got David Rico over there. This guy's keeping us up to date. Take a look at the last touchdown run here, and it's just Herschel Walker getting loose. No safety up. And you can see Amos well behind trailing the play. With that run, Stevie J has 279 Ooh. rushing yards in that game, which is the most we've seen in a game in Ultimate League history. Stevie just setting records out here. Well, after the flag, it's going to be a first down for Kiv at the 42. Oh, Stevie J. I wonder if it's a requirement that you got to be a very noble person to be a part of Team Noble. Anything else would be false advertising. Plus territory, ball at the 47 now. How about this ball game, Scott? Back and forth. Kiv imposing his, his will through the air. Stevie on the ground. Kiv 2-0, Stevie 1-1. One the one. winner of this one will be at the top of Division B of our elite conference here in the Ultimate League. And maybe in the driver's seat. A lot of people would come in thinking Stevie J was going to maybe be at the bottom of Division B, but with that running game and improved defense, he's here to play. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think Steve. I thought Stevie was getting slept on going into this ultimate league. Now we've gone to the two-minute warning now. Ball at the 34. Kiv needs a touchdown to regain the lead. First and ten. Bunch to the right, Tyree Kill solo to the left. Quick throw, Bo Jackson. Spins to the 29, that's where the forward progress is. It'll be second and five. This is one of those moments where you want to eat every second of the clock, score, without giving Stevie J much opportunity to respond. Especially since he's got such a run heavy type offense. You really want to force him to have to get down the field through the air. And maybe use those timeouts. Well, motion out hill. Carson Wentz. A oh, wide open is Grant. And he drops it. 
Steve. I was looking for a word to describe it, and it was indescribable. It was just a flat-out drop. But he's not the greatest receiver in the league. So Keem Grant, 79 overall, 37 cap. Now he's a speedster. He probably gives you more than he should for his overall. So when you finally do see him do something wrong, it's hard to complain about it because he already plays above his ability, it seems. That was a big drop, though. That would give him a fresh set of downs. Let's He's open baby. again, but he oh. can't get rid of it. Stevie's out of his seat. And this might be fourth in the game. Look at that shed. There's nothing you can do if you give. That's Duke Riley. Said one, he's one of his favorite players on the roster. Yeah, you, you look at it and say, what's your key players on the r roster, Stevie J? Said Anthony Barr, Herschel Walker, Joey Boza, all these pro ballers. And then at the very end there, he's got Duke Riley. Making plays. He knows feared. something about Duke. Yeah, he's most feared. Part of that program and the ultimate team. It's a former LSU Tiger right there. Well, I spent some time in Baton Rouge. Fourth and 15, throws it the low. That's going to depend on Cheat the spot. Him. Cheat him, game. Cheat and he him. didn't get it. Stevie's failing. Boom, he said, baby. cheat him, game. Cheat him. Cheat him. That was close. That's where that low throw and that possession catch can hurt you. Did you see Young Kid, though? He didn't, he didn't even blink. Now you got to lock up. He's got three timeouts, 117 to go. You, kid, you need to just lock up here, like you said. Give yourself a chance to get this ball back. Let's get a game update. Well, guys, we know how big point differential is this stage in the season. Prodigy pouring it on with another touchdown right here, but then Joel quickly able to respond. Rico, nice use of the passing game here. Yes, and his stick bird threaded the needle, got in, and got the two-point conversion. Eight seconds left in the game, 34-18 Prodigy. Right, thanks, gentlemen. Remember, Prodigy won 38-18 way back in the Madden Challenge. Four pitch left. And gets... Take it down at the 30. So it's going to be third and four. Those game updates are cute in that 34-18 game. But this is where the action's at, Coltrane. It's big, biggest play right here, third and four. Got to get out what there. He gets a block. Stevie. And that's going to do it. Walker. And Stevie's still on his horse. You got to go down. And he'll just score. Why not? Pours it on. What a rushing performance for Stevie J. He's rushed it 27 times for over 300 yards on Kev. It's just not any rushing performance, Scott. That's a ultimate league record rushing performance. It's the most yards we've seen in an ultimate league game in the history of the ultimate league. And Herschel Walker has gone off. Always been salty about Herschel. Why that? Said he wouldn't go to Clemson because Clemson at that time didn't even have a red light in the town. That's why he chose Athens, Georgia. I don't think you want to question Herschel Walker. No, he's a beast. I still, I, mean, I could have sworn I seen him fight in an <laughs> MMA fight just a few years back. Wentz. And the wheels have come off the young kid. Kiv Wagon. And not only Stevie J gonna move to be tied in first place in this division B at two and one. He's ended Young Kiv's perfect season. Young Kiv now gonna be two and one as well. He's also gonna be leading the division in point differential. 28 seconds left in this one. Kiv out of timeouts, ball at the 50. He gets himself an extra stack of roof. You know, when you're in college, an extra stack of roof's nice. Ain't nobody turning down a grand. Overthrows Bo Jackson. Yeah, when we go out to eat at this stuff, Stevie, Stevie be feeling it. He's like, man, I'm used to eating like a college student. Yeah, ramen noodle. It's a treat to hang out with you guys. Fruity Pebbles was my go-to. Well, Lucky Charms, Fruity Pebbles. Captain Crunch Berries are the real deal, too. I'm not, gonna turn, I'm not going to turn down Captain Crunch. It's got to have the berries, though. 
Yeah, yeah. No, without the berries, yes, it's trash. We're on the same page, Scott. Yeah, without the berries, it's complete trash. We are for sure on the same page there. Yep. I wouldn't call it complete trash, but it, no, no. It's it's Come another on. level when you get the crunch berries in there. Hey, were they sit in the milk a little extra extra long. The milk is nice and berry licious. Watch your cereal now. It's underrated. So 11 point game with 12 seconds to go. Stevie J just would not go away. And then when he had the opportunities to pounce, took the lead and would not relinquish that. Give over 300 yards through the air, but over 300 yards on the ground? That's a whole different level. Final eight seconds of the game. Stevie James run game. You're going to have to keep an eye on that all season long. Keeping him consistent throughout the entire year. He's really mastered that formation. Done tight slots. It's going to be a lot for anyone to deal with. Get Kiv right here. You Kick the field goal. Kicking the field goal will make your point differential better. And that's what he's going to do. So it's going to be an eight-point win for Stevie J, who all of a sudden is at the top of Division B with the tiebreaker currently over Young Kiv. These guys will face again later in the season. We'll see what kind of adjustments happen there. So the final score, 38-30 to 30 between Stevie J and Young Kiv. And then Prodigy taking Joel behind the woodshed. 34 to 18. Let's go to Adrian Lawrence, who's standing by with Prodigy and Stevie J. Yes, here with our two winners. And Stevie J, I don't know if you had heard it, but you broke a record for the Ultimate League per really? game rushing yards, 355. Wow. What do you got to say to that? I mean, I got the best run game in the community, as they say. More pitch. So, hey, he, he didn't invest in his D-line. I told him that before the game that it wasn't, like, even he's had to have some weird gap shoot. But uh, I just covered all bases, and I just made it happen. All right. And you here, sir, Prodigy, you took the win over Joel, which you also did in the challenge. Did his game change in any way that you had to fight? Yeah, so I prepared a little different for him. He was in a new offense, something unique that I've never played before. But I had the game plan ready and executed it, and we were able to get a big win. All right now. And Stevie J, now that you have this win on the board in your pocket, you delivered Kev his first L. How are you going to approach the rest of the season? Um... I'm just, I'm excited to be 2 and one just I'm in the driver's seat, and uh, I, just, I control my own destiny, so it's, it's a great feeling. And you, Prodigy? Yeah, it feels good to get that first win. Starting off 0-2 is rough, but once you get that first win, it makes it easier for the rest of the season to just keep on going and get that momentum back. Indeed it does. Best of luck to both of you. Dave and Rico.